So after reviewing the demand curves, now we're flipping and we're thinking like a producer today. Don't think like a consumer. Don't worry about them. Only think like a producer. Well, define supply. The, the supply definition is the same as consumer except for one word. Look at your demand. The demand definition is the ability, desire, and willingness to purchase a product at various price points. Well, if you're a producer, all we got to do now is change the word, right? What is defined supply? The ability, desire, and willingness to do what? Not buy it, but what? Sell it. But sell it or make it good, okay? At various price points. Bada bing, bada boom. You see how this one's going to be reusing what we learned in demand. We're just flipping the script a little bit. We're changing the economic actors. So what is the law of supply? This is why the supply curve slopes upward. Here's what the law of supply says. As price goes up, you supply what? More or less. If you can sell, if you can sell this lightsaber for $5, but then tomorrow I tell you you can sell this lightsaber for $20, are you going to make more or less of them? More. Yeah, you're going to make more of them. You're like, oh, holy cow, I can make so much more. Um, I think, Yelsey, you're the bake shop. Okay, you did the um, Shark Tank bake shop, right? Well, if she can make, if she can, if she can sell her product for more, then by God, she's going to wake up at four in the morning and make cookies all day. Okay, so as price goes up, your supply goes up and vice versa. As price goes down, you're going to make less of it. You're gonna make less of it. As price goes up, supply goes up. As price goes down, supply goes down. Let's skip three. Let's go here. So take, take what you put in three and read this. Explain what profit motive is. Remember capitalism, the six effects of capitalism. One of the effects of capitalism is profit motive. Producers, yes, you want kids to have fun and play with these lightsabers and get enjoyment, obviously. But that's not why you really make them. You really make them to make a profit, right? Yes. Yeltsy wants to create a bake shop and be a great baker and have her customers get a lot of enjoyment and that will get new satisfaction. However, at the end of the day, if she's losing money, she can't bake. You can't be a baker, right? So that's why this one is so important, number five, profit motive. Explain it and how it affects supply. It's, this is simple. The more money you're able to make, the more you're willing to produce. The more money, you're able to make, the more you're willing to produce. I'll say it again. The more money you are able to make, the more you are willing to produce. That is profit. It motivates you to wake up in the morning. It motivates you to produce. The government, we're not a command economy. The government is not telling you you got to wake up, yell to and bake these cookies because we're a free market economy. Now, the government, as you will see, will have a role in your company, which you showed me. You had the FDA come in. That was great. All right. So now let's go back up here. We've done a supply, I mean, a demand schedule and a demand curve. So this will be really, really simple and easy. I don't have to teach it to you. We just got to do a supply one today. So we're going to um, price of life savings on May. So our May the 4th lesson here. We're the makers of these lightsabers today. And we're going to be 175, 50, and $25 for this one, okay? 
Remember, prices are neutral. Prices are neutral. Prices don't care. Producers and consumers care about price, but prices are just a neutral. All right, price of lightsaber. Those are the prices that we can sell it for. Over here, we're going to put how many are we going to supply? How many are we going to supply at these price points? All right, I'm going to give you a little bit of information. I'm going to give you one piece of information. It's going to cost $20 to make one saber. Fiber crystals are expensive. So in order to make this lightsaber right here, it's going to cost you 20 bucks. All right, so now let's take a look at it. Well, if you could only sell these for $25, how much profit will you make? You will make $5 per. Are you making a profit? Obviously, right? So will you have some motivation to produce? Yes. So let's say we make 1,000 of them for this store. That means we will make $5,000 profit. Our motivation to produce, right? However, what if we could sell this exact same lightsaber that costs $20 to make? What if we could sell it for 50? Did our profit motive go, did our, did our profit margin, did our profit margin go up? Yeah, because you take 50 minus the cost, and now you're making $30 on each one of these. So am I gonna make more or less? I'm gonna make more. But like, holy cow, instead of $5, I can make $30 off of each one of these, heck yeah. I'm gonna like make my kid work all night long. Screw, screw school, stay home, all right? Let's make some money. If you could sell this lightsaber, that costs you $20 to make for $75. That means you're going to have a profit margin of $55, which is higher than this. So let's go and jump it to 4000 And then obviously you see where we're going. If we could sell it for $100, our profit margin is going to be $80. That means that is more motivation than the $5 mark, all right, or the $30 mark. Right, so you, I'm just doing a little math for you to show you, okay? I don't want to confuse, I'm just trying to show you. So let's say we're going to make 6,000 of them. There's that price point. Okay, let's graph it out now. Remember, PQ, 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 shoey, PQ, we got our zero here. Hundred. Make sure you put your dollar signs. We'll go one k, two k, three k, four k, five k. All right, let's go ahead and start plotting. Just put dots. Do not connect your dots. We're going to go up to the 100 and out to the 6. Up to the 75 and out to the 4. Up to the 50 and out to the 2. Up to the 25 and out to the 1. Do not connect your dots. You have four dots on your paper. Remember, we always start PQ, should we? So we're always going to start with the dot. We're going to start with the dot that's closest to price, which is that dot right there. So we're going to put our pen or cursor on that dot. And now we're going to connect our dots. Which way are you going? You're going up. So that means this is supply curve. You know why? Because, oh, look at that. Supply has the word up in it. You will always remember. That D is demand. 
D is down. Supply is up. Demand has an upward, sorry, demand has a downward slope. Supply has an upward slope. They literally tell you that in their word, okay? Bada B, bada boom. So now, this is what you're going to do. Uh, obviously, you know this one. Market supply is the same. Market supply is the same as market demand. It's just the producer, okay? All right, so take a look at that one. And then, so now what you're going to do, let me erase this so you can see what you're going to do. Just like demand, you know how I was teaching you how why demand, the demand curves would shift? And we did that as a review earlier before we, we checked our work here. So now that's what you're going to do with supply. But I knew I knew I was going to be out of time. So I'm sort of out of time as far as lecture. You're done listening to somebody. Okay, I get it. 20 minutes. An adult can do that for about 20, 25 minutes. All right, so you're, you're done. But So what I did was, because you know, so I took pictures of each one of these, and they're just little paragraphs in the textbook, and they're good. They're really good. All right, so instead of listening to me for the next another 15 minutes, read these little paragraphs and get two to three sentences definitions on them. Okay. And then what you're going to do is then you're going to be a you're going to be a builder. And I just created this the other day. You're going to be a builder in Western North Carolina. And I've given you some information here. And then you're going to use those six things that you learned why the supply curve would shift. They're going to happen to you as a builder. And then you got to tell me whether you would increase the supply of the houses or would you slow down as a builder? You got to get that right. Whether you're a baker, like Yelty might be one day, or a builder, you got to understand how supply and demand affects the amount that you would produce. Because if you're producing more at the wrong time, you're going to lose a lot of money and you're going to go out of business. Okay. All right, so take a look at that, read the descriptions, write those six things down, and then start working on working on your charts, okay? And then tomorrow, we're going to put supply and demand together, and we're going to have an X, and then we're going to move them around. You'll look like super smart. Well, you look super smart all the time. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. Stay on. If you don't, go ahead and get to work on this, and I'll see you tomorrow. Elizabeth, you good, kiddo? I was letting you know I'm here. <laughs> Hello, Heidi. Genesis. Hi, I'm gonna get on you. What's up, Heidi? A very good explanation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, we hope you're okay, and we hope to see you tomorrow. Okay, I'll try. I'm really trying. Genesis, she's really sorry. <laughs> okay, right, I'll see you tomorrow, kiddo. Hey, do you need help on anything right here? Um, just quick question. So okay. the second demand is the one with the lowest pricing, right? Um, what From the line demand graph. curve? Right. So D two. D2, D2 yeah. will sometimes increase or decrease. 